God, he's a God that'll stand up for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, we're going to bring forth, um, I won't say now, but he can, uh, Brother Osamedi. Amen. As he leads us in our vision confession. Amen.
Hallelujah. But at this time, we're going to bring up again Brother McCray for our youth ministry spotlight. Let's thank God again for Brother McCray.
and praise the Lord. We give God, we give God all the glory and all the praise. Y'all give these young people another hand, praise. Now, with that being said, I'll tell you what, this right here, what Brother Charles has been waiting on for a long time. I mean, for a long time. We have a, a uh, a young lady is going to give exhortation. And I'll tell you what, this young lady has been doing excellent. I mean, excellent. I told him, I mean, I, Kayla took me up with this young lady right here. <laughs> because the thing about it is, when, when you're doing youth ministry, I mean, you know, you have a passion for it, but when you know the kids get it, right, right. when you know they get it, this young lady, she came up to me. And she, I had gave the kids a challenge. I said, anything that's opposition of what thus say the Lord of doing what Jesus say, without protest, argument, or wishing he would, what he said was different, is an enemy of the Lord. And she came to me and she showed me what she had because that was a homework. And you know what? She was the only one. I gave it to all the people. She was the only one came up and gave it to me with her parents to sign. So, sister. Every, come on up here with your hands on Come on, give our hands on the floor. something of how much can be covered. 
Amen. It's, it's the extent. Amen. How much can be covered? And if you look at it like that, you may begin to think that you don't have much extent. What all can you cover when it concerns you? Because if you could do it all, you would need him. Amen. So if you don't have it all, I mean, that makes what you have, what? A seed that he can work with. Amen. And so I have some examples for that. Um, looking at Mark chapter 12, I'm going to start at verse 41. And it said, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow had cast in, had cast more in than all they which have into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And that's interesting because basically he's saying she gave a double portion of all. It's because we know we're commanded to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind all of our soul and all of our strength. And so here she is in offering, and not only did she bring all of her living, but I believe that was the all that she brought with it as well. Amen, it's beyond what you have in your hand. During this aspect of worship, you can worship him with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul and all of your strength. You didn't even know it took all of that, amen, to flow in obedience and give an offering, did you? And then it said, even all her living. She brought so much, she gave all. She gave all of her extent. Whatever she could cover in that moment, she brought it with her giving. Amen, and I know he took care of her. Because how's she going to go and take all and walk away and not have what she needed? Why would he not sustain her? Why would he not grace her? Amen. And then my second um, example, and y'all know this is one of my favorite people, 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Starting at verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bonded. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in thy house? Basically, he's saying, what do you have of value? What can go towards this? Tell me, what thy house in thy house? And she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. I don't have anything but that my capacity is a pot of oil. Hallelujah. That's the extent of my capacity. Then he said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty, empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all of those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. With that one pot of oil, she had the what? Pour out all. Pour it out all into the vessels. For what? For a miracle. 
Amen. And so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There was not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. See her pouring out is saved her sons, it even saved her life. God gave her beyond her capacity, beyond that pot of oil. She was able to fill several, pay her debt, keep her sons, and had enough left over to live. Then how can you do that with a pot of oil? And she, she brought something more. I believe she was loving the Lord with all of her heart, mind, soul, and strength as well. But she'd also given of her husband. Amen. He was serving the man of God. To the point when it got bad, she knew where she could go because of what he had given. Because he gave all. Amen. And then my last one is in 1 Kings chapter 17. Well, let's start in verse 9. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, thou not like this woman too, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it, and he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil. Amen. Look at that oil again. And a cruise. Amen. She said, I don't even have enough for you to have a cake. What I have is less than what you're asking me for. But what I have, me and my son, we're going to split it. Amen. But he said, make me one first. Amen. Behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. It can be some fear when you give it all. When you're thinking you're giving your extent. When you think you're giving all the capacity that you have, amen, and that, that can be a, 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 a shaky, fearful, scary place to be. But look who you, whose hands you're giving it into. Will you trust him with that? Will you trust him with that? Amen. And so she said, um, he said, bring me a little cake first. He took it down. You don't got to bring me a whole. Just bring me a little cake and bring it unto me. And I can make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord, here comes the word of the Lord. For thus said the, the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent rain. Sent it rain upon the earth. And she went and did it according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat for many days. She thought her capacity was in one place. She thought her extent was at one place. Amen, but she went ahead and she gave that all. She gave that handful. She took that boy and they ate, not just her and her son, the man of God, her, her son, and I can't tell you how many servants she probably had, it just said her house. Amen. Amen, and so I know it can be fearful. You can be, you know, but God had not given us the spirit of fear. Power's gonna rise up. A sound mind is gonna rise up. Amen for what needs to happen for you. And you see, all of that was increase. Can we have increase without 
bring in the all. Love him with all of our heart, all of our minds, all of our souls, all of our strength, all of our service. And then, amen, our living. Amen, he's with you, he's for you. But I challenge you today, and you may not have it today, but I pray that it gets in your heart that you will begin, amen, to, to want to bring him the extent of your capacity, amen. God is faithful. We, no one's not trying to take for you. We do kingdom business here, amen. We have our new facility to acquire for our church as well as for the academy. Amen, we have Spring Valley. And who else know, who knows what else is on the man of God's heart or how God will lead us. But let us, amen, consider our all, especially if you need something. All of these persons, they needed something. If you need something, I challenge you, give him what you have. Give him the all and watch him multiply it and give you the increase that you're looking for. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you please raise your hand if you need an offering envelope. Amen. Amen. Like every, when you give all, you'll give all. Like these persons, when you give all, you'll give all. Amen. And, um, amen. and we have several ways to give. Amen. Those of you that are with us via Facebook, there are several ways to give. And hopefully it's coming across your screen. Amen. You can go to our website. You can click our donation tab. Amen. We have text to give. We have give the fire. Amen. You can call the church. Hallelujah. You can mail it in. There are no excuses. Amen. For giving our all. Amen. Amen. Please stand at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you today. And Father God, let us come loving you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strength, with all of our souls, giving you all of our service, Father God. And also, Lord, the resources that you give us Coming to you, Lord, giving you the first fruit of all of our increase, God. Because we thank you, Lord. We know that it's not of us, Lord, but it's you, Lord, that works in us to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father God, we honor you today in obedience, Lord, bringing our tithes and our offerings. And we thank you, Father God, that we go above and beyond, Lord. And we also so give, Lord, to your righteous causes. Thank you, Lord, for supplying all of your people's need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that they suffer no lack. They only experience your abundance, your increase, Lord, for them and their children, Lord, just like you did in the Word. I thank you, Father God, that you increase their capacity. Lord, they may see their extent as one thing, but thank you, Lord, when they give it to you, Father God, they're able to do so much more. And thank you, Lord, we are able to distribute to the necessity of the saints, Father God, and you find us thankful, Lord, loving you, honoring you, and giving you, Lord, our all. And all we pray, it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Amen. Empowered to prosper. Amen. That's what we do with that increase. Hallelujah. Us and our children. Glory.
He is greater. You have to know that. Receive that. God is greater than whatever it is you're facing. Whatever it is you're facing has to bow down to the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So like Sister Wanda said, if you're given no fear, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And he's greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's continue to worship him. Amen. Set your attention on him and his greatness. Amen.
Amen. Put it on tablets so that he that read it can run with it. And the Bible tells us, amen, that the vision is for an appointed time and at the end it will speak. So as the year progressed, the vision is supposed to still be speaking. Amen. amen. Increase is still supposed to be speaking. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Are you seeing this? He's supposed to increase us more and more in 2024. That just simply means we're increasing more in May than we did in April. Because the vision is still speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible says it grows towards the end. It's going to continue to speak. Yeah. Even more and more. Amen. And Jesus said something in Matthew 24 verse 13. He said, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Amen. So I got to stay awake. Somebody say, I got to stay awake. Come on, say it again. So we got to stay revived, alive. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now we said that to, 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 to stay, the word revived means to be responsive, attentive, alert. Amen. To what Jesus said, to what he promised, to who he is. See, I'm just, I'm alive, alert, attentive to him and what he said. I'm responsive. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So, so to be alive, to be revived is to be awake. Mm, glory to God. Amen. To be responsive. I'm responsive. Amen to what Jesus said. Amen. Glory to God. You know, I often wonder why Jesus gave the gospel to Mary first. Amen. Why did he give her when he rose from the dead? Why was she the first one he saw? Why did she receive the good news first? Why did she receive solutions and answers to her situations first? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I, I traced it back to this one scripture. A, a, amen. And, and Jesus showed me in, in, in uh, uh, John chapter 11, look at verse 28. Amen. She was revived, responsive. Alert to what Jesus said. Amen. Amen. And when she had said, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, the master hath come and he called thee. Watch how she responded when he come. And as soon as she heard that, what happened? She arose out quickly and came. That girl was revived. She was alive. She was responsive to what Jesus said. Glory to God. Amen. Now here's the opposite of being revived. Go there to Hebrews chapter 5. Let's pick it up in verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Amen. Somebody say, I'm staying revived. I'm staying revived. I'm staying awake. I'm staying awake. In this season. In this season. All right. Now notice what he said. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need to one teach you again, which has the first principles of the oracles of God, and it becomes such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Verse 13. Notice, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is obeyed. Next verse. Amen. For strong meat belonging to them that are full age and those by reason of use have their senses uh, exercised to discern both good and evil. Isn't that another verse? No, no, no. Go back to verse uh, 11. Verse 11. That's where we want to go. I'm sorry. Verse 11. Amen. Notice, he said, of whom many things I have to say, but hard to be uttered. Why? Because you have grown dull in your hearing. Mm, see, so when you're not revived, you're dull. So you're dead to what Jesus said. You're not responsive. Mm. That's delayed obedience. Mm. You're not quick to hear, quick to receive. There's some dullness going on. Amen. So you're not as responsive as you were when you first started out in the beginning of the year. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Glory to God. And as time progressed, things happened. Things came up. Amen. The, the, you know, not us, but, but others become dull and irresponsible. Amen. Amen. But Mary wasn't dull. She was awake to what Jesus said. She was responsive, attentive, and alert. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. She was revived. Can you see this? Yeah. Amen. Now, you got to understand, amen, to, to, to the opposite of being revived or awake is to be asleep. 
Now let's look at what happens when you're asleep and not revived. Matthew 13, let's pick it up in uh, uh, verse 24. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 13, And another parable he spake forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. Amen. Somebody say, Good seed. Good seed. See, that's a good word. Amen. Amen. He's sowing a good word. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. But the Bible says, Amen. But while man slept, the enemy came and did what? Sold tares among the wheat and went his way. Amen. When did the enemy do his work? While he was asleep. See? Amen. Glory to God. So it's imperative and of a necessity and essential for us as the body of Christ to stay revived. Glory to God. To stay revived. Amen. Because when you sleep, that's when the enemy sows tares. That's when he sows doubt and unbelief. That's when he sows discord. That's when he sows discouragement. That's when he sows worry, anxiety, and fear. Amen. When you sleep. But when you revive, when you revive, you are awake. And you are taking away his crown to sow his seed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm staying revived. I'm staying alive. I'm staying alive. I'm responsive. Attentive and alert to what Jesus said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Give, I give. Jesus said, Forgive, I forgive. Jesus said, Walk in love, I walk in love. Jesus said, Serve, I serve. I'm alive, I'm responsive, I'm alert to what Jesus is saying. Well, oh, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Oh, glory. Boy, this is good right here. I see something else in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Notice there in Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 14. Ephesians 5 verse 14. He says, wherefore he said, awake. He's telling the church this, y'all. This is the body of Christ. This is the church. This is a spirit filled, born again, Holy Ghost, tongue talking church right here that he's talking to. And he had to tell them to wake up. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Amen. See, they're asleep. And the enemy, if they stay asleep, the enemy going to sow something. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Are y'all seeing this? So he said, wake up. Wake up. Get revived. Amen. Now that sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ shall give you what? Life. See, only awake people, arrive people, have life. Mm. Life belongs to those who are. And life represents solutions and answers, mm, remedies and cures. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Notice what he, notice what he said in, 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 uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Amen. Notice what he said there. He says, awake. See, he said in another church. This is a whole other church, Minister Rodriguez. And then turn the church of Ephesus. Now he tell the church of Corinth, awake to righteousness and sin. So truly awake people, truly revived people, avoid sin. Amen. Mm. Amen. Look down in Romans 6. Look at verse 11. The Bible tells us in Romans 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon you yourselves to be dead indeed to what? Sin, but alive. See, be woke to what Jesus said, not what your flesh said, Amen. not what the temptation said. Dead to that, irresponsive to that. Amen. Glory to God. See, one or the other, either you awake or sleep. Right. Mm. Right. Are y'all seeing this today? Woo, glory be to God. Isn't this a good word? Good. Amen. Amen. Now go back over there to Isaiah 52. Let's look at verse 1. Glory be to God. I was teaching this uh, uh, to a group of leaders last week on the, on the, on the conference call line, uh, you know, and they said, Pastor, it just seemed like, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we just have just all kinds of situations in church and the body, the believers. I said, you got to wake them up. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 
And what do you mean wake them up? Get them revived. Get them alive, responsive to what Jesus said. Glory to God. Now notice what he said. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Put on the strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Notice what he said there in the next verse. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise. Sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bands. Of now, is God going to do this? No. He tells you to do it. You shake yourself. You awake. You lose yourself. You wake up. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, Lord. I mean, he said, wake up. I've done something already about it. That was your turn. You need to work alongside with me and be keeping you awake. Because you stand awake, stand revived. That's the answer to all your concerns. Mm. Somebody say, I'm staying alive. I'm staying, I'm staying awake. I'm staying awake. Glory to God. Now, now, notice in Habakkuk chapter 3, look at verse, verse 2. Verse 2, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Oh Lord, I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Amen. What month is the month of May and June? That's the middle of the year. What God want to do for us, for his body, in the middle of the year? He want to revive us again. Amen. He want us alive to what he say. Responsive to what he say. Why? Because he want to finish the good work that he began in us. He want to finish increasing us. He want to finish expanding us. He want to finish growing us. He want to finish making us greater. He want to finish, but he can only finish to the degree that we are awake Amen. and responsive. Amen. Amen. So we got to wake up. I said we got to wake up. I said we got to wake up. I said we got to wake up. And last week, we gave three ways to wake up. What was the three ways? Who can, who, who, number one was what? Oh, y'all looking at y'all notes. Y'all ain't been studying this this week. All right, hey amen. Who, who, can, who, can, who got them three ways without looking at your notes? You can't look at your notes. I got something for you. If you don't look at your notes. Ah, too late, too late. <laughs> amen. See, see, the word. So winning. So what was it? What was it? Number one was what? Function and humility. That was it. Now see, you know, y'all, y'all, listen. You know, you you living in a real world full of tests and trials. And these tests and trials don't announce themselves. They like pop-up quizzes. Amen. Y'all remember you going to school, the teacher give you a good pop-up quiz. With Do you get to look at your notes? Do you get to prepare? Oh, no. That's how life is. It'll show you a pop-up test. Amen. Glory to God. And if, you, if you're not flowing in this, amen, moving in this, having your being in this, you can already have the answer, amen, and not benefit from it. Look at this in Hebrews 2, verse 1. Glory to God. See, that's why the Lord had me to come back and teach this. And teach it. I asked the Lord while I was in prison. Because he had, you know, he had me to start out when I first got born again. I started off reading in the book of Matthew. Amen. A lot of people say start off in the book of John. But I always tell people start off in the book of Matthew. Amen. Because if you read the book of Matthew, he describes detail Jesus' ministry. I mean, he get into detail with it. He don't, he don't leave out nothing. Glory to God. And then Luke, James, Luke, Mark, Mark, Luke, and, and John, they just go to the high point. News and briefs. Amen. But if you'll follow back, then he, he, he go in the nook and crannies. You know, he don't let it just clean up the outside of the car. He, he go in and detail the inside, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so, and so I always tell people to go to the book of Matthew 
And uh, so, so the Lord told me to start in the book of Matthew. And I started reading in the book of Matthew. And then I got over there to the, the book of Mark. And I got through the book of John, uh, uh, Luke, and then John. And I said, Lord, why are you saying the same thing in all four of them? He said, because faith comes by hearing, not by having heard. And I got it for the first time. Amen. It, it, it denotes an occurrence, continual occurrence. Continual giving myself over, amen, to what he said. And that's why he'll say something to you in Matthew. Then he'll get over in Mark and say the same thing. Then you'll go to Luke, he'll say the same thing. You go to John, he'll say the same thing. Amen, what is he saying? I want you to get this. Glory to God. Amen. And so uh, he said, therefore, you ought to give the heed to the most earnest heed to the things which you have to the things which you have to the things which you have which you're supposed to give heed to things you have heard see I had a sister she she was a uh, 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 she's a she was addicted to conferences you know she would always be going to a conference every time you look up pastor pray for me I'm going out of town where are you going I'm going to go to this conference I said, man, you just went to one last month. Well, I'm going to this one every month. Amen. And then so one time she came up and she said, Pastor, pray for me. I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to this conference. I said, no, I ain't praying for you. She got mad at me. And uh, she called me afterwards and she said, uh, why you ain't praying for me? I, you my covering. I said, yeah. I said, I said, yeah, but the Lord told me not to pray for you. He, she said, how can the Lord tell you not to pray for me? I said, well, you know, why you going to go hear something new and you ain't even doing half of what you're hearing right here? <laughs> she, she got quiet like some of y'all did. Yeah. <laughs> Turned around, went back to the seat. Amen. Glory to God. See, here she is piling on. And they didn't give me out, making room for the, for the new, you know. And the Lord spoke this to me after she left. He spoke this to me. He said, every new revelation demands a new devotion. That's what he told me. And I said, okay. Lord, show me that in the scripture, what that looked like. And he took me over there to uh, 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 Luke chapter 5. Verse 30, 36. Watch what he said here, Luke 5. And he spake a parable unto them. No man put a new garment, a piece of new garment upon the old. If otherwise, then both the new make up a rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agree not with the old. Notice the next verse. Yeah, I will get this. It's going to look good. And no man put a new wine into an old bottle. Else new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall pass. Next verse. But new wine must be put in the new bottles and both are preserved. So what is he saying? You can't hear something new and still have the old, the same old devotion and commitment and dedication. Because the new that you're hearing is requiring a new devotion, a new dedication. And it's like putting new wine in old wine skins when the devotion ain't matching the revelation that you're hearing. I just said, they ain't going to agree. Because you still got the devotion of last year. When you're hearing something new this year. Amen. And you still want to come in with that old devotion. And they ain't going to agree. Because God requires more. He's requiring new. He's requiring better. Mm. So if you ain't willing to recommit with a new devotion, don't want no new revelation. Are you seeing this? Amen. Boy, that, that's just gangster right there. The Lord showed me that, bro, morning, man. I, was, I always wanted something new. Amen. He said, Where's your new devotion at there? That's why I ain't working. Ain't no agreement. Right. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You get this new revelation, this new insight on prosperity, increase and breakthrough. It requires an increased devotion. An increased commitment. Woo! Glory to God. And then you got agreement. Hallelujah. You 
You know, you saw a new patch on the old garment and people see it. And you're like, man, you know, we used to do that back in the day. We used to try to fix, you know, the iron or burn or something. You know, we had them old irons, you know, they'll burn up your clothes. You know? And you try to suspend them. And you try to, you try to sew, you try to tear a piece and sew it in there. <laughs> and everybody took me real close and said, <laughs> See, they said, man, you be setting up under this word, but the devotion and the conduct don't. Wow. Wow. They ain't agreeing. Hey, Amen. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. So we're staying alive. We're staying revived. We're staying responsive, attentive, alert to what Jesus said. Yeah. And we living in that, moving in that, and having our being in that. And the Lord gave us three ways to be revived. One of them was humility. Y'all remember that? And humility is what? To hear and to do what Jesus said without protest, argument, and without wishing it was different. Look there with me to Isaiah 57. Let's pick it up in verse 15. I ain't even going to get to that other message. We'll just say that for next week. It said, for thus said the Lord, holy, lofty and holy one, that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who is also of a contrite and humble spirit. Why are you dwelling and hanging out with those people, Jesus? To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. See, when you walk in humility, he keep you revived. He keep you alive. He keep you attentive and alert to what he says. Whew, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. Number two, contrite. What does that mean? Contrite. That means teachable, correctable. I'm correctable and teachable. Glory to God. How teachable and correctable are you? Mm, that determines, amen, how revived you are. Whew, glory to God. Amen. Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. Now, let's get into this other teaching because the Lord told me, he said, go back and go into that other teaching because I need, amen, you to grow in that. And so this teaching right here, y'all got y'all Bibles and pen, Facebook Live, get your Bible and pen out because we're going to really get into some rivers. Amen. We're going out to the deep today. We're going to look at some deep things of God because he got something he want to show and do for you that he's yet to show and do for you. And this is the reason why he's kept you alive. This is the reason why he's forgiven and had mercy on you. Because he want to keep you on pace to the better things he want to do for you. Mm. God has provided some better things for us. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 40. Somebody say better things are in store for me. God has provided what? Some better things for us. So if you don't want nothing better, get away from God. Amen. Because if you stay up with him, he goes, he got something better for you. We're going to go over to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! I tell you, first lady all the time, I got something better for you, girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> you better stay close to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God having provided something better for us. Boy, y'all need to get the shout right now. Amen. What's wrong with y'all, man? Are y'all mad? Man, y'all mean God has provided something better for you? Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory be Amen. to God. Amen. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. He's provided something better for you. Amen. So I need to know how to access that. Amen. If he's provided, that means he want to give me access to it. Are y'all saying this? Amen. So today, amen, for the next 15, 20 minutes, I want to talk to you, amen, about growing in faithfulness. Say it with me. I'm growing, increasing, and getting better in faithfulness. Amen. Glory to God in faithfulness. In faithfulness. In faithfulness, in faithfulness, Amen. in faithfulness. Amen. Now, faithfulness is something, amen, that God requires of us. 
Look there with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, Let a man count, uh, count us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. Come on, say it again. That's me. Verse 2. Amen. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found. Faithful. Somebody say, that's me. That's, that's me. me. Glory to God. So faithfulness is something that God requires of us. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. So if God requires this, this means I can be it. Because he wouldn't require something I couldn't be. Are you seeing this? So God has given me faith so I can become faithful. Mm. Are y'all seeing this? This is what Jesus is looking for. Faithfulness in us. Amen. Now the Lord gave me a definition of faithfulness. He said faithfulness is ongoing, continual, and perpetual obedience. Oh, to God. It's ongoing, continual, perpetual obedience. Amen. Are you seeing this? Amen. And so that's what he's looking for. He's looking for consistency. Amen. Where he's concerned. Glory to God. Now look here with me, if you would, to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, Proverbs twenty verse six. Proverbs twenty verse six. Amen. Notice what he said. Men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man or woman who can find. See, they are rare, extraordinary, and exceptional. They're not everywhere. Glory to God. God said, who can find? He's looking for somebody faithful. Amen. Shh, glory to God. Because when he finds somebody faithful, he's going to increase them more and more. He's going to do something better for them. Amen. Look there in Proverbs 28. Look at verse 20. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 20, a faithful man will abound, will abound, will increase, expand, and become greater in what? In blessing. Amen. Somebody say faithfulness is important. Faithfulness is important. Glory to God. See, he's looking for faithfulness. Where we find faithfulness, he's going to add increase. He's going to add blessing. Mm. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Look here with me in Luke chapter 18. Let me show you an effect of faithfulness. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Look there in Luke 18. Look at verse, verse, verse 2. Verse 2. And Jesus said, there was a little city of judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Next verse. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, No, I fear not God, nor regard man. Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her what? By her what? By her what? By her what? See, that's faithfulness, right here. This judge knew that she was coming back. Woo, hallelujah. This judge knew she was going to stay the course. This judge knew that somebody was going to change and it wasn't going to be her. Glory be to God. Can you see this? Amen. This judge is having a meeting with himself about this woman's faithfulness. And this woman's faithfulness gonna make him do something that he ain't never done and that he don't do for nobody else. Yes. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. And if this amen woman's faithfulness can control the conduct of this judge, amen, how much more can your faithfulness control the conduct of your father? Right. That's right. How much more? Glory to God. If this man be an evil, wicked judge, Amen. And his conduct can be influenced by faithfulness. How much more can your just, righteous father conduct be influenced by your faithfulness? Can y'all see this today? I said, can you see this today? Amen. That's why I continue coming. Weary me. Verse 6. The Bible says, and, and, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Oh, glory 
glory to God. Verse 7. Amen. And shall not God avenge his own leg, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with? Why is he bearing long? Because he's drawing faithfulness out. Continuous, ongoing, perpetual obedience. That's what he's drawing out of you. Well, so if, if something that you're believing for is prolonged, just stick with faithfulness. Well, it's the straw that go in God's glass. And it'll draw out of him whatever you need. If you keep it in that glass. Well, glory to God. You know, the longer you keep drawing out of the straw in the glass, what's going to happen? Amen. Whatever's in that glass going to come up through that straw and be in you, baby. Oh, glory. Amen. But well, faithfulness is the straw that, amen, that draws the blessing of God and the favor of God, the increase of God. Well, and if you keep it in the glass and keep drawing with your faithfulness, hallelujah, whatever that God put in that glass, whatever he's full of is going to be in you. Oh, glory to God. Can y'all see this today? Yeah. Amen. Notice the next verse. Amen. Verse 8. I tell you, he will avenge them out speedily. Why? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man coming, shall he find what? Faith on the earth. So he's looking for faithfulness. On the earth, he's looking for it. Woo! Glory to God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9, For the Lord go to and from in all the earth, looking for someone who is faithful. Amen. Glory to God. So he can show himself strong on that man. Are you seeing this? He's looking for faithfulness. Where will he find faithfulness? Continual, ongoing, perpetual obedience to him. Glory to God. He's going to add increase. Even the wicked, even your enemy, those who oppose you, against you, denying you, rejecting you, you're going to make them change their mind. Your faithfulness, amen, can turn the wicked in your favor. Oh, glory to them. <laughs> Hallelujah, it'll make them bless you. Amen, it'll make them work for you. Amen, it'll make them, amen, glory to God and increase to you. They'll say, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'll say, I know why you're doing it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Because you don't have a meeting with God about me. Amen. He done told you to avenge me. Amen. He done told you to do right about me. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes all his enemies to be at peace. Oh, glory to God. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness, your faithfulness will draw this out of God. It will influence his behavior. It will influence his conduct with you, his response to you, your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, where does faithfulness begin? Where is, his, where is faithfulness demonstrated? That's what I want to know. Amen. See, because you don't get to become, you have to become faithful. Amen. Faithful, faithfulness, amen, is something that you become. Mm. Are y'all hearing this? Amen. I said faithfulness is something that you become. And when you become faithful, amen, notice the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, amen, uh, verse 2. Notice what he said. He says, uh, he said, and, all, and, and that which you have heard among many's witness, the same commit thou to who? Faithful men who are able to teach others also. Can everybody teach? Only those who are faithful. That's who God commits stuff to. That's who qualified to teach others. Glory to God. Even as parents, amen, think about it. your faithfulness qualifies you to teach your children. Are you seeing this? Amen. That's why we chose Brother McCray to be the youth leader. I saw something in it. I saw faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. I said, I saw faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. And I trained him in accordance to that. And he got promoted on his job. Got promoted some more, increased some more, increased some more, increased some more, increased some more. And he's still increasing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because it's required in stewards 
that we be found faithful. Because a faithful person abounds in what? Blessings. And a faithful person is able to do what? Teach others. Mm -hmm. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I told you this thing right here is excellent, y'all. And this, man, the stuff we're teaching, y'all, it is really, I don't know if it's happening to you, but it's happening to me. Man, I can go back and listen to, you know, last week messages. Man, whew, the Holy Ghost will show me something great and new. And then they'll say, all right, give me a new devotion. Give me a new dedication. And I'll do it for you. Ooh, two can't walk together unless they agree. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Say this with me. Every new revelation requires a new devotion. Now notice what he said here. Notice, how do I become faithful? Because faithfulness is something I become. Mm. Mm. It ain't automatic. Amen. It's something that I'm made, I become. Amen. Now notice here, amen, the first way that, a, the, 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 that you become faithful is, is by how you handle instruction. Number two, how you handle correction. And number three, how you handle assignments. <clears throat> Are y'all seeing this? How you handle what? Instructions, correction, and assignments. That determines your faithfulness. Amen. Why did God call Abraham faithful Abraham? Because he received instruction. He received what? Correction. God corrected him. Amen. Glory to God. He received it. Amen. And he, he was faithful in his assignment. <clears throat> and he became faithful Abraham. Are y'all seeing this? Yes. Glory to God. You can tell if a person is becoming faithful by how they receive instruction, how they receive correction, and how they receive assignment. Glory to God. See, faithfulness doesn't begin until Jesus instructs you to do something. Faithfulness doesn't begin until he corrects you in something. Faithfulness doesn't begin until he assigns you with something. <clears throat> Y'all remember the parable of the sword, Matthew 25, right? Huh? Amen. He gave, he gave three of his, his stewards. He gave one five talents. He gave one two, and he gave one one, right? And the Bible says he gave it to them according to their ability to perform on it. He knew their degree of faithfulness that he was required out of it. He knew that if he gave the one two five, he couldn't perform on that. So he didn't give him five, he gave him two. He knew that the one he gave one two couldn't perform on two, so he didn't give him two, so he gave him one. He gave it to them according to their ability to perform. Are you seeing this? Matthew 25, let's pick it up in verse 14. Amen. Now notice here in verse 14. Amen. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servant, delivered unto them his goods. Amen. And he gave one five talents, another one two, another one one, to every man according to what? His several ability. Are you seeing this? Don't be uh, jealous or uh, uh, envy somebody else because they got more. That's just more responsibility. Are you seeing this? Us having more than each other don't make us different. It just makes us more responsible, more accountable. Are you seeing this? Many people want more, but they don't want more accountability. Are y'all saying this? The more you get, the more accountable you become. The more you get, the more responsible you become. Amen. Because Jesus, watch this, he, he straightway took his journey. I mean, he gave them their talents and gifts, right? He gave every one of you a talent and gift. He gave every one of you a supply. According to Ephesians 4, verse, verse 15, 16, every one of you have a supply. 
have a talent, a grace, a gift, a calling, a purpose. Every one of you, some of you have business and ministry graces. Glory to God. Are you seeing this? Some of you, you got callings on you. Amen. I mean, it's something better in you. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Something greater. Amen. And the Bible says, amen. Notice now, he went his journey, verse 16. Amen. And he that received the five talents went out and done what? Traded with the same and made them other five talents. Are y'all seeing this? Faithfulness doesn't begin until you get instruction, until you get correction, until you get an assignment. Are you seeing this? Amen. Go ahead, next verse. Amen. And likewise, he that received the two, he also gained two more. Next verse. Amen. And he that and he that received the one gave the earth and what? He and his Lord's money. See, his faithfulness. Hmm. Next verse. Ooh, glory. And for and a long time after those servants are coming and reckoned with them. Notice. And he that received the five talents came from the five talents and said, Lord. Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides me five more talents. Let's look at how the Lord responded. His Lord said, Well done, thou good and good and good and good and What is the Lord looking for when he gives you an assignment? What is he looking for when he corrects us? What is he looking for when he instructs us? See, he give it to you, and then he go away. He step back, and he turn you over to faithfulness. So when he come back, he can reward you. Because a faithful man abound in what? Blessings. Oh, really, God. Faithful man, who can find? Oh, when God find a faithful man. Ooh, hallelujah. A faithful woman. <laughs> ah. Glory be to God. This is how you react when he finds. Well done. Good and faithful, sir. You have been faithful. Amen. Over a few days. And I will make you ruler over everything. In and out into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? I said, are y'all seeing this right here? Well, glory to God. Hey! I can go through the next one. He told the, the one he gave with the two. Same thing. I gave two more. Well done. Good and faithful, son. In and out into the show of the Lord. Are y'all seeing this? And the one he gave the one to. Go down there to the one uh, Bible man. Get down there to verse the one he gave the one to. Amen. And uh, I think it's in verse 26. Amen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said with a he, he, he gave the one to the Lord answered him. Then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou was a hard man reaping on the door when you were sown, gathered not when thou hast strong. Next verse. And I was afraid and went and hid that talent in the earth. Here, here go what you what you gave me. And watch how the Lord reacted. His Lord answered and said unto him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap not on what I sow, and gather why I'm not strong. That's your responsibility. Amen. Next verse. Amen. He said, and, and thou also have therefore put my money to, to the exchanges, and, 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 and at my coming I should receive my own with you. Next verse. Amen. Take thou therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him who had the ten. Oh, it be to God. Are y'all seeing this? I said, are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Next verse. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. For to everyone that hath shall be given, and he to have abundance, but him that hath not faithfulness, that which he has will even be taken away. Whenever you don't find faithfulness, you find subtraction. Mm. Wherever you find faithfulness, you find addition. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. This is what sets separates one believer from another. This is the distinction in the body of Christ. Faithfulness. Are you seeing this? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. 
faithfulness, ongoing, continual, perpetual obedience. And faithfulness doesn't begin until God gives you instruction, correction, on a sign. Let's look at the Apostle Paul. Amen. Second, we'll close. First Timothy 1, verse 15. Talking about faithfulness today. The Bible says a faithful man will abound in blessing. Amen. This is our year increase. The Lord wants to increase us more and more, us and our children, in 2024. But he's looking for faithfulness. Amen. We got to increase in our faithfulness. Amen. Because faithfulness is something that God requires. Amen. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. It's required in all stewards that a man be found faithfulness. So God requires this. He can't unrequire what he requires. Is that a word? Unrequired? <laughs> we can't change God's requirement. <laughs> we gotta give it what we require. Hallelujah. <laughs> we can't, can't unrequire what he requires. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he requires us to be faithful. Ongoing, continual, perpetual obedience. Glory to God. Now watch this. This is a faithful saying. Paul said this is what? Faithful saying. A what? Faithful saying. What kind of saying? Faithful. A faithful saying. Right? Right? This is what? What is it? Y'all missing it. I just gave y'all the definition of faithfulness. You're supposed to put that in there. This is an ongoing, continual, and perpetual requirement. Right? Amen. Somebody said this can't be altered or changed. This is a faithful saying worthy of acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to do what? Save sinners. To do what? To do what? Save sinners. Why did Jesus come into this world? To save sinners. Now why are you in this world? Go to John 18, 17. John 17, verse 18. Remember, this is a faithful saying. All right? Notice John 17, 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, how did God send Jesus in there? What did he send Jesus in the world for? Save to do what? Save is that a faithful saying? Is that an ongoing, continual, perpetual requirement? Yeah. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the Bible says, just as God sent Jesus into the world to save sinners, even so, even so, have I sent you into the world. Yeah. What are we in this world for? Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Are you seeing this? Faithfulness begins when God gives you an assignment. Are you seeing this today? Are y'all seeing this? 1 Corinthians 1, look at verse 19. Here's the Apostle Paul where this assignment is concerned. For it is written, 1 Corinthians 9, 9, 19. I'm sorry about that. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself what? Servant to all. That I may do what? Gain the more. He, he had an assignment. He's got a talent, a grace, a gift from God. Amen. And he and the Lord going to come back and hold them accountable. Glory. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. So he said, look, though I be free to do whatever I want to do, amen, but this is what I'm, I'm going to do because I'm going to demonstrate faithfulness to what I'm here for. Amen. Woo, I'm going to make myself servant of all that I've been gained the more because the same reason God sent Jesus into the world is the same reason he sent me into the world. Amen. Come on back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 15 again. Verse 15 again. Amen. Uh, is that not First Timothy? First Timothy one fifteen. 
Ain't that what we want? Yeah. Okay, first Timothy 1 15. He said, This is a faith saying word of all said Christ Jesus came to the world, Satan said, oh, who am I the chief? Paul said, I'm the chief. How be it for this cause I obtain what? Mercy. That in me, first Jesus Christ might do what? Show all long suffering. For what? A pattern. You Jesus is pattern to the lost. I'm Jesus' pattern of his mercy, of his love to the lost. And he required me to be a faithful pattern of his salvation to the lost. Go to verse 12. Go to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. Notice what he said in verse 12. Amen. And I thank my uh, Christ Jesus, my Lord, who enabled me, for he counted me. And when he counted him faithful, what did he do? Gave him an assignment. Put him in the ministry. Put him in business. Put him in his career. Whew. Glory to God. Are you seeing this? Amen. 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 Now, what? How did Jesus count Paul faithful? Because remember, faithfulness begins with an assignment, with correction, and with instruction. Go here with me to Acts eleven. Let's pick it up in verse uh, twenty-seven. Acts 11, 27. Amen. And in these days came the prophet from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Watch this. And there stood up one of him named Agabus, signified by the Spirit that there should come a great God throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Next verse. Being the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Next verse. Which also they did, and they sent it to the elders by the hands of who? Barnabas and Saul. and Saul. So they received an assignment. Yeah. They received instruction. Are y'all seeing this? Because God wants to correct this family where the church is concerned. So he assigned these two men to do something. Now watch this. Now that's in Acts chapter 11 and from Acts 3. Uh, chapter 3, it was written in years. So the next year, watch this, because faithfulness is what? Ongoing, continual, and perpetual. Let's see if Paul stuck to his assignment. Go to Acts 12, 25. Amen. Acts 12. Well, I'm just the urchin. I just work in the children's ministry. Well, hey, these guys, they are to, amen, they, they taking food to the poor. Great apostles, great prophets in the food pantry ministry. Started out right there, remember? And then in Acts 13, look at verse, verse 1. Acts 13, verse 1. Watch this. I want y'all to see something. Because promotion doesn't come from the north, south, east, and west. It comes from the Lord. It's him who puts up one and casts down another. Now that was at the church of any of prophets and teachers. What? Prophets and teachers. Amen. One of them named Barnabas and the other one named Paul. But in Acts chapter 11, they didn't start out as prophets and teachers, did they? They started out as food pantry workers. Handing out food to the needy. But they were faithful in that. Amen. Acts 12, 25. Come on, y'all. Woo, glory to God. Acts 12, 25. Amen. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Go back to verse 2. 13 verse 2. And the, and the Lord said, Acts 13 verse 2. And as they ministered to the Lord, in fact, the Holy Ghost said what? Separate me. Barnabas and some other work. See, he had given them another work now. Why? Because he's not been faithful in the food pantry work. Are you seeing this? Holy God. God's looking for faithfulness. And faithfulness doesn't begin until you get an assignment. Our correction, our instruction. How you handle assignments, correction, and instruction will determine your faithfulness. Hmm. Go back. Acts 12, 25. Here we go. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had what? Come on, they food pantry ministry. Soon as they fulfilled their food pantry ministry, soon as they demonstrated faithfulness. With the talents that they had. Watch this. Acts 13, 1 and 2. Here it is. Verse 2. And 
And as they ministered the Lord and fashion, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I have to do. Why? Why did it come right out of their faithfulness? Why? Because that's what God was looking for before he could assign them that. Mm. How do you see it? He said, if you couldn't have the church and ministry work, if you couldn't have to be the person working in the youth, greeting, how are you going to have a ministry? How are you going to have this business I got planned for you? I got to grow you into that. I got to faithful to you and see you in the day. How are you going to have the, 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 the house that I got for you when you can't have the apartment? Somebody say, I'm faithful. Say it again. I'm faithful. Say it again. I'm faithful. One more time. I'm faithful. Glory to God. Faithfulness. 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 Now, it's, it's a several things that can interrupt your faithfulness, but not like this one thing. I'm going to tell you, this one thing right here, it'll corrode, corrode. It'll canker worm your faithfulness. Y'all know what it is? Say it again, Miss King. Say it one more time. Wrong relationship. One more time. Wrong relationship. One more time, real loud. Wrong relationships. Wrong relationships. Jesus. Boy, the tie your faithfulness up. Yes. Every time. Hallelujah. I said every time. Yeah. Galatians 5, verse 7. You did wrong well. You were faithful. You were faithful. But who hindered you? It's always a who where faithfulness is in. Hmm. Are y'all saying this? Yeah. And just like a person can a wrong relationship can hinder faithfulness, right relationships can establish it. <laughs> Look there in Acts 15. Let's go to verse 36. Amen. This is Acts 13, 13. Acts, wait a minute, wait a minute, right there, right there. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again, visit our brother in every city which we have preached the word and see how they do. Watch Paul reaction. And Barnabas determined to take him with who? John Mark, whose surname was Mark. But watch how Paul reacted. But Paul thought it not good to take it with them. Why? Because he departed from them at Pamela and went not with them to the world. He said he ain't faithful. How are we going to take him in this new assignment when he departed? Amen. He don't hear us from running with this thing. Woo! Are y'all seeing this, y'all? Well, somebody say I can make a comeback. Come on, say it again. Paul said, no, he didn't, he didn't go with us. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But well, later on, watch what he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look at verse 12 and 13. 12 and 13, Paul at the end of his ministry getting married. And, 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 and uh, uh, go to verse 11. Uh, he said, uh, verse 11, verse 11, verse 11, Bible, man, push me back one verse. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark. Take Mark. The same one who who we weren't going to take with us at first, who wasn't faithful, he done made a comeback somewhere. Amen. He done found out in heaven faithful. He done found out a faithful man abound in blessing. And he done got with his assignment. He done got his correction. He done got his instruction. And now he went from unprofitable to profitable. Bring it with me now. Somebody said, I'm making a comeback. <laughs> Man, let me quit for I be here all day. Y'all stay too big, man. I can keep going any more with this thing. <laughs> Come on, stay too big, man. Praise God. I'll be sick when it's 6 o'clock, man. <laughs> Y'all put it on me too much. <laughs> Praise God. Unto you. 
and on faithfulness, O Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the faith that you've given us. And Lord, we exercise our faith to become faithful. To become faithful. Because you showed us through your word, every new revelation requires a new devotion. So we devote ourselves a fresh and anew to these two revelations that we receive today. And we thank you, Father God, that as we act on this word, Jesus Christ will be reproduced in and through us. He'll connect us to our greater increase. He'll expand us, grow us, and cause us to become more greater in Him. We thank you for these revelational truths that you minister. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's just in my spirit to, to, to minister to those of you who are believing God. Amen. For, for a healing breakthrough. For your healing. Amen. And for financial breakthrough. Healing and financial breakthrough. Amen. The Lord said in 1 John, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, that you be in hell, even as your soul prosper. And because you set up under this word today and received the engrafted word without protest argument and without wishing it was different, oh, now your soul is beginning to prosper. Oh, your soul is prospering. Oh, glory to God. I said your soul is prospering. And because your soul is prospering, your health is responding. Your financial breakthrough has come. Oh, glory to God. Receive your healing and receive your financial breakthrough now in the name of Jesus, the Christ of You'll return next week with testimonies and praise reports of healings and financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I can see is kind of is lacking, you know, because I when I was in South Carolina, their time is um, ahead of us an hour. So by two thirty in South Carolina, man, we done ate and slept. I was like, get back on the get back on the on the on this on this message and this heart. But you know, it it requires commitment and faithfulness. So that was an on time. I don't know about y'all, but I received it. I received it for myself. Um, but I thank my pastor for that word and just know that he hears from heaven. So, you know, we need to be here to receive it um, because it's going to save our souls. Amen. 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 Well, don't forget the call tomorrow morning on Tuesday night, Word Encounter, um, Thursday, and Wednesday. Wednesday, Bible. Okay. All right. And I think um, everyone needs to stop by the table at the foyer. You want to stop by there, get some information. Um, you want to stay connected, stay hooked up on the word, okay? All right, look at your neighbor. Give me some, give me some going home music, um, DJ. He loved it. They did, DJ will love to shout. Y'all want to shout? He's gonna stay around for a few minutes so y'all can shout. Amen. Amen. Just in case you didn't get your praise on early. You still got some shout you need to get out, you can get it out, amen. I just said shout it out. Amen. <laughs> Alright, it is our prayer to the Father on your behalf, look at the neighbor, that God's riches.